For the work you'll be doing in WordPress, you'll be putting your content in either pages or posts. Let's talk about the difference between these two. First, posts. So posts go back to when WordPress was primarily blogging software. That means when you enter content into a post, by default, it records the day and time that you publish that content. By default, posts also allow readers to comment on your content, although you can turn that feature off. For posts, WordPress creates what's called an archive page, which lists all of your posts in reverse chronological order. If you have an important post that you wrote a month ago that you don't want to get pushed down by more recent posts, you have to make it sticky so that it stays on top. Let's see what this looks like in the back end of WordPress. I'm in the back end for my course website and I have the list of all the posts I have for this course. I use posts for my website to record the exercises for this class. And if I click quick edit, we can see some of the things I just talked about. Here is the date and timestamp. Here is the option to allow readers to comment on your content, which I've turned off for this. And here's the option to make each of my posts sticky. The most important thing to know about posts for this class and the reason I favor them as a place to put content is that you can assign posts to categories. In the back end of WordPress, we can see this option for assigning categories. I've already set up my categories and so they appear in the quick edit window right here. And for each one of my posts, I can go in and check off which categories apply to that post. Relative to posts, pages tend to be one-off or timeless. You don't tend to associate pages with things like timestamps. Pages are hierarchical, meaning that you can organize them into parent and child pages, which helps with your organization behind the scenes in WordPress and also affects your website's URL. But most important to us is that you cannot assign categories to pages unless you install a special plugin. So there's one additional place that can be important for putting in content but it only appears in certain themes. It's what's called the portfolio. If your theme has a portfolio option, think of it as a special kind of post, specifically set up by a theme developer as a place to display projects that you've worked on. Portfolios like posts can also be assigned to categories. Let's take a look at what this looks like behind the scenes. Again, we're in the back end of WordPress for my course website, and you'll see that this particular theme does have a portfolio option. It happens to be where I put the gallery items for my website. That means the examples of different reflections that students have written in my course before. You'll see that I can access the portfolio option as well as pages, as well as posts, all from the left hand sidebar. So why do I care so much about categories? Because I want you to assign the reflections you write this semester to categories. You will come up with those categories after you've completed a number of exercises, including the open and closed card sorts and the curriculum map.